We found Punko wandering around the arena, and he is now going to finally be starting his match versus Fudo. As we were stating earlier, Punko just came off losing to another Armika player, so this has got to be real scary for him. Absolutely. This, there's nothing worse than getting eliminated by the same character. Oh, right in a row, yeah. yeah. Especially if it's something like you don't like you lose sometimes and you go back and go, all right, look, they caught me with something, right? I just got to look it up. What was the frame data for this? Oh, that's really plus. I thought it was mine. All right, cool. But a character like Mika, at the level that has been played so far, between obviously Pluto sitting there on the player's side and Joe Porter earlier today, sometimes you just were wrong. And that can be really scary, especially for somebody who can be very emotional. But, well, you know, he gets into this. He's amped up. So we'll see if we get to see some of that, because we did see Punko make good use of Colleen's tools, using the counter to go through the V trigger, using it to anti-air the, uh, the different speed jump attacks. Uh, let's see if he can focus that a little harder in this match and not get run down the same way by jump link like he did last time. Pluto, of course, is, you know, he is a very, he's a different style of Mika than Joe Porter played. Uh, Punish, so that's though, minus okay. seven. Yeah, you're gonna get a punish in pretty much any range there, unless it hits me. All right, you can see right there. This is a much more measured style. I was reminiscent of the play long and the master back in the four days. And unlike that, if Puko willing to use that despite being minus four and usually punishable, Mika at max range cannot attack it. Very nice reaction to the drop kick. And this meter. is gonna put him close to stun afterwards, and that bar is frozen solid. But does go away as soon as she gets touched. Even right there, you see the Beaver Rosa doesn't do true damage, but close enough for the game's count. Pluto now was in. No, back row, defensively. Oh, and catches him with that. Pluto at the point where a combo into Super could take it. No wake up button for Pluto. That's twice now in the first round. Trying to establish his position, but he was a bit slow there. This will kill, I believe. Yes! Okay, I was wrong about how. I thought it would just like I thought it would have to be on record, but Crouch That's a very high damage combo if she has the second bar to get that EX rushing punch. That option there by Punko. And that sweep, Kessel sweep something that uh oh, yeah, definitely the only character that can do. Yeah, definitely. And nice. that is going to be a punish. Mika super being four frames. Even at that range where she can't punish with the normal, she can get that super. They'll come read out and touch you. Say what's up to my girlfriend. How we doing? There's the defensive way, nice. checking the move for Oh, and jumps over the anti air. You never like seeing that. The future. You can hear the. You can. You can hear it right there, just in the head. While like, oh my gosh. Just like that is one one. Puko is sitting on two bars, so he's not out of this at all by any means. Puko counter poking with the back heavy kick, getting the setup here, but does it a little too early, and it just whips through. But they have catched this one. It's been a dangerous decision in the first couple of rounds, so this one working out. Puko stun gauge is very very close now. And this punish will stun him. Fortunately, Stun goes on the line, so Punko can't finish it off with uh, the fall down, but he still gets a very good juggle from our uh, stun combo. Yes, that is optimal because you get the fierce before the tail storm. So it's pretty interesting, right? After that, a lot of characters, when they stun someone, will have to do a jump in or something like that. But Colleen's one of those few characters that gets a special combo. She can set up the Hailstorm projectile first, do a fierce, the Hailstorm hits, and then she still gets the stand heavy kick right after. I definitely love some fireball combos. Shout out to the Keats, shout out to the Loras. And of course, Colleen, as Punko finishes that 1 0, the perfect two. You see right here, the way he got that perfect, he finished it off with the beast skill. He's definitely now starting to reach a bit further into Fudo's range with confidence. And with punishes that down heavy punch beautifully. Punko going down, or Punko going down an early loss. Yeah, I'm, uh, it, it, right now it kind of looks like Punko is enforcing a bit of hesitance now on Punko's side right there. He's this is his the, punish. Yeah, I think he, he got the, he didn't get the button in time. The buffer kind of betrayed him. He got caught by. Nice, so much hit stun. Will the armbar stun? No. No stun, but that's even better because now he gets the one hit stun and this will kill. Let the freeze damage come in. Wait to the last possible moment. And as you stated, yes, the freeze does do damage over time. So waiting that little bit gets that optimal damage. And I know one, you like that. R Mika Popsicle optimally chill. I like it. Let it sit now. Punko sitting on max point. Tags him out of the drop kick again. Has not been letting those come through. Punko really dominating so far. Yo, who would have thought Punko needed to take some lessons from Minnesota? Nice quarter, yo. And Fudo's just been struggling to get in ever. We have not seen any of his character oh. Neutral jump denied. Oh. Okay. So that's gonna start that's really the late one. Like his only beat trigger of the round is gone, and he's gonna have to win this a little more honestly. He is sitting on full bar, but Pupo has done such a great job denying and then a jump in. This won't quite be it, but it's gonna be dang close. 
for one more to seal Overhead it up. Overhead could be it. A low could be it. Oh, got the dash it. Man grab man whip. Grab denied, and that's going to be a punish at any range yet again. Very nice match knowledge right. from Fudo. Fudo is in, but he got caught from four combo. Oh, the V reversal must have come out too early. Puko takes it 2 0. And oh, last yeah. year's Evo runner up, second place, Raf Fudo. Falls in 65th place, doesn't make it into the semifinals. There is no room for error. We are out here living and dying in Las Vegas. Eli the Curry. Well, uh, Donka here. That's Donka. I sometimes forget my own name. So. I, I, I understand. But yes, uh, that was really interesting to see because, of course, we saw Mojo really you know, give it to Punko the first time they fought, and then Punko just coming right back and taking four rounds straight versus Fudo. You saw the style made the fight, right? Joe Porter was taking it to him. Mojo always in, always in, always moving, always forcing the issue. Fudo's style is much more naturally slowed down in pace, measured footsie range type of things, doesn't really want to reach out very much, and Punko was right there. He actually, like much like Colleen, like still was just trapping him in all those places. So I well, we saw zero body slams yes. out of Fudo. And because of that, we saw neutral game fireballs out of uh, Fudo or Punko that we had not seen in the other match because Mojo just wasn't giving him the space to do them. Yeah. Wow. That was that is an incredible turnaround right there for those two to be uh, the ones that make it in the semis. Because these quarterfinal pools are now the traditional one in winners, one in losers uh, into the top 64. Settles it up right there. Now we have a legendary player by any means. Choi, boy. John Choi, the man, the myth, the Norcal. Certainly Legend. not known as a Street Fighter V player, but known as a Street Fighter player in general, Absolutely. right? You know, we, we know him as that guy who throws fireballs with Ryu and Sagat, and whoever has a fireball better than almost anyone else in the world. Just does it with, with perfection, and he is going up against anywhere Nemo. The guy, look at this businessman right here. Yo, it looks like he didn't even take a day off. It's it's crazy with Nemo, right? Because he hasn't entered a lot of Pro Tour tournaments this year, so he has very, very few points. But he dominated Topanga. He's dominated other tournaments that weren't on the Pro Tour. He's been a monster online, and there's like about 10,000 Twitter videos of everything he's ever done yes. with the character Urien. After switching off of Vega, he, he picked up Urien in Season 2 and has become the guy to beat with this character. Absolutely true, and it's going to be interesting to me. Now, I probably am in the minority of players and, and just watchers of Street Fighter V in that I actually think Ryu gives Urien quite a bit of trouble in this matchup. And why is that? Um, I think that the fireball game, which is certainly something that John Choi is going to be aware of, is oh, yeah. uh, one that Urien, he beats characters in a lot of interesting ways. Because, of course, with the V skill, he can headbutt through fireballs, he can charge his fireball. But the spacing of it varies depending on the character. And Ryu's walk speed and not needing to charge his right. fireball, I think, gives him a lot of angles. Yes, and of course, Urien's jump is pretty floaty, easy to DP after throwing a fireball. I can definitely see it being the case. However, walking under and down piercing the first jump of the match, Nemo is just showing so much knowledge of this character's options. As you mentioned, Nemo has been a very special kind of dominant, not on the Capcom Pro Tour, but at the highest level of competition nonetheless. And he is all over John Choi right now. And there's that scary fierce punch on Crush Counter getting a full dash combo at any range. Okay, that was unsafe, but just find it's the kind of unsafe. Right, right. Space, right. <laughs> space independent, right? It's it's maybe unsafe. Yeah. So we'll have to see, I, with that stand line kick, I have to think Ryu, at the very least, you got to try to touch, reach oh, out and yeah, see if you can get it, but uh, regardless. And the thing oh. about John Choi is you're not going to see a mastery of matchup knowledge on him. He's a player strictly based on a fireball fundamental game. Very building that up. The V, uh, the, uh, v gauge for Ryu turns his fireball into a... Uh, very nice. Annie here with a down pierce. And this is going to be so much damage in the corner. You'd think we'd have flipped it around, right? Then we were talking about Nemo's ability to dictate the pace of the fireball. And we're going to get the full tyrannical finish. Bang! Nemo takes game one with extreme prejudice. That was so fast, I barely remember anything, right? That was. That was an extremely dominant match. He anti-aired every jump John Choi did. He jumped on him himself, and he was he was just really taking it to him with crush counters. Every range and angle, I have to think that Nemo just knows right now. Must have been on it. We are in a new wave. Uh, this is wave H. Uh, I believe we started the 12 p.m. wave, so uh, I don't know where this is at necessarily, but Nemo is looking crisp. You see right here. Gets the V-skill, lets him get the armored headbutt. Safe on block, no challenge from John Choi. Over in American Legends, stop doing him like this! Stop it! This won't kill, but it's going to put him in the situation where most anything will. Oh my gosh, the pressure there, and then the 
And that down medium kick isn't even plus anymore, right? But it's at a range where it's hard for Ryu to press a button back. So Yurian feels confident using his huge normals to just dictate the pace. Spacing it out right now. Nemo is looking like everything to the legend. Very cool counter hit. Only combo though from John Choi Boy. But unfortunately, the DP whipping is going to give Nemo the hole he needs. Steady actually tried to optimize that firm off the, uh, the crush counter. Steady's going to get stunned. We got another this may be it. Yeah. I think this is it. Got to be it right there. Oh my. Oh my. Stop it. Oh, Heaven, Earth, and John Choi just trembled after that set of four extremely dominant rounds. So, yeah, if you were wondering if we were just hyping it up and this was just Twitter hype and everybody who didn't know, no. No. I guess Nemo just every year decides he's going to show up and just beat the hell out of everybody for one weekend in Vegas. And, you know, he did make top eight last year with Vega. We'll see if he can do it again this year. Uh, but... Someone else is going to be leading you through that as we are moving on and doing a commentator swap right now. I'm Taking scared. a small break. That's the last thing I see before I got to go play. <laughs> that and a sandbag's crazy face. Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay. All right, so we will be getting right back to y'all with later on. Donke and I are done. Thank you so much. Make sure to show love on Twitter, at Das Donke, at Eli the Curry. We'll see you guys next time. Welcome to day two of Street Fighter V here on Capcom Fighters at Evolution 2017. I'm James Chen. I am Z. <laughs> you ready for some more upsets and some craziness today? I am ready for some blood, sweat, and saltiest of tears. There have definitely been uh, a, a very heavy tier list today so far and uh, we've already had a, we've already lost for example Fudo who has been eliminated out of this tournament, tournament which just blows my mind he's always been one of the most consistent Mr. Players. Consistent is out of the tournament and we're still playing pools yep what sorcery is this <laughs> well we are going to be watching a little bit of sorcery now from one Itabashi Zangief from Japan, going up against SoCal's Bushin style. Now, Bushin style obviously has had a lot of practice against Stupendous, for example, but you know what? Nobody plays Zangief like Itabashi. Nobody does, so we'll see how this plays out here. I always hear varying, uh, differing opinions on how this matchup goes. 
between whether or not this is good for Rashid or good for Zangief. Seems like Itazan already knows the holes and what to do. That nice lariat. And then just gets right in there, catches the V reversal. Oh Close oh. to stun, and that's it. That crouching life punch is going to do it immediately. Feels oh, a little extra another meter. headbutt. Double headbutt combo. <laughs> stunner. Right, so of course, you know, Ita's on a very good friend of Fudo since the Virtual Fighter days. Oh, yeah. Now that his good friend and former teammate is knocked out, he's carrying the shoulder for the duo. It was him, actually, that had salty tears when he was watching uh, Fudo's performance many <laughs> Evos ago. But now it's up to him. Now, what are the opinions that you hear about this matchup? Who I says hear, what? I hear, well, I mean, I feel like Rashid players feel like Zangief does well, and then Zangief players feel like Rashid does well. Is that not a sign of a good, even matchup? That's how that's how I usually view it, yeah. so yeah, definitely. But certainly not in the corner. Rashid needs to find a way out. Yeah, so I'm going to activate. Oh, nice. I like that. Was ready to punish that, showing signs that he definitely knows the matchup. All right, time to get in there. Goes for his own throw versus Zangief. Can't be scared. The SPD is not a defensive tool like it used to be in older Street Fighter games. Oh my! Oh no! <laughs> and just at the last second, being able to close it out with the trigger into critical art. There it is. Itabashi taking game number one over Bushin style. You know, usually we don't talk about stage advantage. Uh, it's more like a Tekken thing about the, the size of the shape. Oh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. here in Street Fighter, especially with characters that perform well when they have cornered their opponent, you know, a stage like this that can break on both ends, or break on, you know, on the left end, I think that bodes well for characters that are trying to <laughs> run away and not get cornered by Zangief. Oh, oh nice wow. Was, yeah, it was a little, nice little corpse hop there. Gets to the other side. Now, Bushin style has this corner pressure now going. And I do like that he's being aggressive because you can't be scared of Zangief. You have to kill, go at him. He, he, he does not have the same defensive powers like Lariat or, you know, wake up SPDs. Oh, in between. The thread. He did that again. All right. Well, unfortunately for Itabashi now, no more meter. And Bushin style risks a lot by going for oh, that. Oh, gosh. To the other side. And then gets the mix up there. All right. <laughs> a little bit too far for the spinning mixer. The crouch light punch seemed to just whiff, and that gave Itabashi the opportunity to SPD him. Oh, oh. no. Mistimed that a little bit, a little bit too early. So it just whiffed, and Itabashi with a wake up throw. And now, here we go. What's the mix up? And you pray that oh. the restaurant breaks because getting cornered like this is exactly what Yuzan wants. <laughs> there you go, there goes the restaurant down, but fortunately the walls scroll in a little bit. Now, oh god, just headbutts all day and now Bushin Stop is running into them. And I feel like he's throwing out those headbutts more to stop the tornadoes than anything. All right, here we go. Again, that corner pressure. Oh, oh. right on the toe. Okay. That is definitely one of Bushin's. Oh, oh no! no! That was a mistake. The greedy jungle misses. Yeah. And he eats a SPD for it. And he had Itabashi so close to being stunned as well. Whoa, I don't even know what the heck was going on with that jump. Oh, wow. <laughs> Getting a little extra momentum from the tornado. Now. Itabashi just trying to find his way in here. Oh no, that was definitely... Oh, but it was too far. But however, that caused the, the, the tornado to be meaty. And Bushin Style tried to challenge and got caught. Oh, oh too far. Bushin Style was walking back. As <laughs> I knows, he was pixels away from sucking him into that SPD vacuum. He was right there. And Bushin Style looking very focused here. No, no Bushin poses from him just yet. Curious to see if he's going to bust that out on a win. But you know what? He's going to have to take Itabashi out this game in order to get to that point. And Itabashi, of course, very scary. Ooh, elbows. Well, that's the first uh, anti-air we've seen from Bushin Style. Yeah. Oh, he's got oh, that. Bushin Style loves that trick. He loves that trick. He goes for it a lot. 
actually so worth it though. Yeah, that's the question, especially after you've had it succeed once or twice. You know, kind of stave off from using it. Oh, see, uh, again! Mm, the greed. You could smell it, it reeks in this. Yep. Oh, But okay. so too, another SPD from Itazan. And he's going to be able to combo off of that, and he has an EX meter, so... Should be spin it. it. And even if that didn't kill, that would have been a stun. So now... Spin it to win it. Itabashi at match point versus Bushin style. So Bushin style had relinquished the light lead in two of those. Yeah. Ego spikes on the toe. It had worked for him in the first match, but a little too overzealous. And yeah, again, there's that option select. Just try to lariat in between those because if he cancels it, then you get the lariat. If he just does the crouch heavy punch without canceling it, then nothing happens. Oh no, ends up jumping into that. Nice conversion. He's gonna get some good damage and the corner carry. Oh, oh but a wake up power armor. Bomb. Ah! And there it is, Itabashi throwing his head back with a laugh. You know, and it's in good jest. I wanna pretend it's more like, <laughs> you fool. But more it's just like just having a good time. Itabashi always in such a jovial mood. Yeah, he's more leaning towards the uh Emotional player, we usually imagine them as like a stoic <laughs> Asian. It's like Fudo, I don't think, uh, win or lose. He's sort of like always the same, but he does on, you know, when he lands something or he vanquishes his opponent, he's going to let you know <laughs> and pop off on stage. And I like that, right? They're right, sort yeah. of learning what it means to be on camera and that showmanship. And that's very different when back in the day in arcade, when you played head to head, right. you never needed to think about those theatrics. Mm -hmm. uh, but now, you know, to get more sponsors, to get more a bigger fan base, I think they are thinking a little more about that. Yeah, and, and you know, it's also just, you know, I feel like the more often they come to the US and hang out with a lot of the mm -hmm. US players and see all the pop-offs here, see all the shenanigans like, on, like in the ring at CEO, you know, going on over there, I think, you know, they just realized it's a bunch of people having fun, so having a good time. So my idea this year was to ban the phrase, I will do my best, from any <laughs> like pre-match <laughs> interviews, because all the Japanese players, I think it's, a, it's customary just to say it. It's right, almost yeah, rude yeah, not yeah. to. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And in my mind, I'm like, of course you're going to try your best. <laughs> Both players are going to try their best, but then what? And even in like the, the most heated you know, SBO matches back in the day for Togeki, they're like, yeah, I will try my best. To do what? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe people should just start being like, you know what? I'm only going to play, you know, like half of my strength. You know, I'm not taking this seriously. I think if they <laughs> like really popped up, like, oh, I want to break this guy's neck. Like the cops would be called in because they, they'd <laughs> have to deal with it like as a real threat because they won't. Maybe they don't take that type of uh, the trash talk. Yeah, the trash talk. There's no concept of it. There's I only mean, like modesty and then like a real threat to a man's right. life. Well, I mean, speaking of Itabashi, you know, we saw some a little bit of heat between Itabashi and Nemo in the previous tournaments. You oh, know, you yes. Know. Nemo is Didn't want to shake his hand. They're actually upset. really good friends, but Nemo does despise the character of right. Zangief. And <laughs> his reasoning is it's a very noob-friendly character, and whoever derives pleasure from winning by just, you know, spinning the joystick and pressing buttons <laughs> is too casual of a player for him to get respect. Especially the way Itabashi reacts to it, you know. I mean, it, it almost looks like Itabashi even knows sometimes that, you know, the SPDs he's getting away with a lot because the way that he's reacting with the laughs like that. But uh, we're going to have uh, Gods of Louisiana, Ron Masanma mm. going up against NUI Bab Babushas from Mexico. Masama, of course, uh, known for being a Texas player, even though he's from Louisiana, but travels to Texas a lot to play over there. Plays a very strong Rashid. Game. So we just saw a Rashid from Bushin style, and we're going to see another one. But last time we saw some Zangief, who is Ramasama going to be going up against? It is going to be a Nakali. Is it just me, or are there more like palette swaps at this year's EVO than previous tournaments? I think people are getting a bit more creative with their character color selection. Oh yeah, and the, and now like, I think last year we only had like 10 colors for each of the okay. characters. I think some of them have 16 colors now. Speaking of 16 colors, that uh, Super Turbo right. color edit, that was <laughs> wild. I was like, I, can, you can do that to this game? Yep. Back 
same thing back in like in the old CBS two days. People would make all black, oh, you know, yeah, characters, the, the shadow characters. Yeah, exactly. Oh, we got man. some uh, army clad of color Nikali's and the sheets going on in the army base here. All right, good throw tech. Ramasama. Oh wow, no punish on that. Probably wasn't expecting the sweep at that moment. Just wanted to use the opportunity to get in and dash instead. Oh man, I think he extended that a little bit. Anyway, and Babusha didn't think that he was gonna actually get hit by that. But here we go. Oh. Babusha has him in the corner now. Gets the stun. He's gonna be able to take that round one pretty convincingly. Ramasama not able to get his offense going and that's what Rashid wants to do and usually I feel like Rashid does well in this matchup because he is aggressive he is aggressive he gets a lot of uh, pressure especially off that couch heavy punch and kind of controls that neutral space against Nikali really well but Babush is doing a good job preventing Ramasama from really getting any momentum all right all right, getting in there again with that spinning mixer. No cancel on the tornado. I think that was the light version, and I don't think you can cancel that one into the V skill. Again, Ramasama trying to push his way into the corner as best as possible, but still oh. down a lot in life, and then had his yeah, had his V trigger red right there, and was completely nullified by a well placed seismo. Surely he must have seen the seismo coming, and yet decided to activate. Questionable decision there for Ramasama. Right, well, it gets the crush counter, and uh, just like that, yeah. another one ready to go. But Babusha just blocks it. It's all gone, out of play. And now Ramasama needs to find a way for the comeback. But he's about to build up a meter, so maybe a combo into a critical art is exactly what Ramasama's... No, he spends some of the meter. He chooses to spend the meter to get the pressure, and then uses the EX Eagle Spike to get himself out of the corner. He's going to be able to convert off of that. Oh. He has the life lead, and then the shimmy, the throw bait. The classic. Any Almost hit to the mixer, you know, you can either end it short or extend it for the maximum hits. But he leaves it short, gets the nice little shimmy reset for the victory. Standing light kick, anti air, trades. The Kali, of course, with some really good jump buttons. Too far oh. For that. oh man, I didn't think he was going to be able to make it to the other side from there. I thought Nikali was fired up away from the wall. And here we go with that pressure. No meter for any V reversals for, for Babushas. There it is. But that means he spent two V reversals. Oh, oh will that go through? Oh, no, no, it doesn't. Ah, didn't make it far enough. Couldn't quite make it to Kansas. Got caught by the tornado. But you know what? He has Ramasama in the corner, but great wall jump from Ramasama. Gets himself out of the corner, and now the pressure going. And again, the X will take it on that last hit. And yeah, you can see the expression from Babushas there. Mm -hmm. He is not happy. And Ramasama trying to suppress a, a smile, it looked like. And I think uh, Babushas is telling him, please go to character select. Babushas with the Neko Mimi cat coach with the flag already waiting in the back <laughs> for the victory. A bit premature. <laughs> you can see his compatriot there. Is that a cactus on his it's like head, a, or is that like a cat? It's like a bow tie or something. <laughs> wow, that is, that's a homie right there. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, is, that is who you want in your corner right exactly. there. Exactly. That is, that is your supporter. Now, what is the official rule on Evo? There is coaching until top eight? Until semis, I believe. And okay. I think if you play on stage, you cannot have a coach. Okay. You cannot have a coach. But you know what? If you Round can't have one. a coach, you're going to have the next best thing. You're going to have your green flashing bow, flag waving friend in the back. If you want to consider that the next best thing. <laughs> Do you think players will take advantage of that rule and try to get in as much coaching as possible before semis? Yeah, I mean, I think that's the right way to do it, though. You know, I mean, if you have a lot of people discussion, you know, with some strategies like that, I think that's the right way to do it. It's a very tennis thing, you know. You have coaches before and afterwards, just not during. Okay, using the tornado, keeping that eagle spike safe. Here we go, Babusha's now. Oh my god, no cancel off of that oh, heavy punch. Cross up. He's got the meter now, so any hit is going to be able to confirm into it. There it is! Just Hello. like that. 
with no health left, he is going to be able to take that round off of the conversion. I think we should just leave it on this round view and two. commentate his friend. I know, right? <laughs> All right, again, clipping with the end of that spinning mixer. All right, didn't quite get out of the corner. Not quite close enough for the cross-up. Lack of anti-airs from both players here. All right, here comes that pressure. Didn't have any meter oh. for the V reversal. All right, gets in there. Spins a lot of... Oh, wow, Ramasama with the call out as well. Big bet. Using that opportunity to activate the V trigger. Oh! oh. Still got clipped by the Tornado too. Didn't want to risk the juggle after that. Just in case it was too late, he would have been punished on the quick rise. And yeah, again, Babusha's choosing to go with the V reversal instead of saving his meter for the trigger instead. Oh, great! Air to air with the juggle. First time he's landed that combination. Mm, and then gets in there with the crouching light kick. Oh, and more and cheering squad. This is. Unfair for Ramasama, perhaps he needs to call in his entourage. He needs some of the his GOL teammates to run <laughs> his by. His other teammate, his friend, like backed off. Oh, he's, he's repping the Anwi studio. Nice. Ramasama all alone, brooding, stroking his chin, thinking what he needs to do to take this rubber match. Round one. Fight. All right, here we go. Final game between these two players. Just counter poking with a crouch light. Now Ramasama. Oh, okay. Just going in there with the spinning mixer. That just controls a lot of space, keeps Dismal from jumping, and it's safe on block. It is disadvantaged though, and nice seismo use right now from Babushas. Something that we didn't see him use as much in the first game. I mean he stopped one trigger in game two. Air reset. Blows up the roll forward. Again, both players with the suspect anti airs, and they're really paying for it. Yep, again, no anti airs there. Getting in there for the throw. The Seismo interrupts yeah. again. This has been so good for Babusha. Yeah, it's smart because he just interrupts him and then he just walks up and blocks the tornado. Gets it out of play oh. as fast as possible. And now Babusha is here at match point. Ramasama recently he just had his own match point, but then Babusha's taken three rounds in a row. So it's been three rounds for Ramasama, three rounds for Babusha's. Can he make it four? Gets in there once again with that spinning mixer. Here comes the pressure now. Into the corner. But yeah, see, there you go. So Ramasama's got to notice that he is challenging after spinning mixer. So we may even see nice. a, a, risk, a risky spinning mixer into EX spinning mixer. But that would be a very big call out. And if it's blocked, he would be uh, very, very much in pain afterwards. Slightly... Here. All the way into the corner using that V trigger makes it safe as well. Here we go, gets the knockdown. Ah. Oh! Babushas with a nice oh, call no. out. Right, close to death. Oh! oh what? The seismo just like that? Just it goes for. I don't know, did Ramasama actually hit a crouching light kick? It almost looked like he stomped right over that and. Uh, Ramasama there, congratulating Babushas with a smile. It's a very, very hard read. You can make those after you've, in the final round, after you understand the opponent's tendencies. Right. You know, it's, it's one of those reads, but I mean, at least the EX Stomp is a little bit safe on, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's the other person's turn. You know, it's your minus after that, but no punish for that. But uh, yeah, so uh, Babushas is going to move on representing Mexico. We're definitely seeing a much more international field now that we're here getting a little bit later into the tournaments. But uh, we are going to take a quick break. And when we come back, it is going to be Hori Sako Ooh. going against Harumi in a Japan-Japan oh. matchup. Wow. Yeah. All right. So stay tuned for that. All right. We are back here and ready to go. With Who was that? I don't know. It's a pre-recorded. I think it's a pre-recorded uh, voice on there. So. Play it I want to meet that James Chen. <laughs> you want to meet that? You're soft <laughs> compared to that guy. <laughs> it's the secret. It's my alternate FGC, my secret character. That's your esports yeah. cameo? Yeah. <laughs>
the dark side. You've been given into the esports. That's the that's the Unchenzord side of, of the Unchenzord James Chen right there. So, but uh, uh, as I mentioned before we went on break, yep. we have Hori uh, Scars Sako. That's new, isn't it? Scars. Yeah, I think that's a, a new sponsor. Okay. Harumi. Going up against Harumi. Harumi, uh, I met in Fukuoka, I believe. Okay. And she had played a Wicked Chun back in the Ultra Street Fighter mm, 4 days. Okay. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but now, it looks like she has taken up Ibuki versus Asako's Akuma. Now, the unfortunate thing for Harumi here, and of course these players both hail from Japan, is that Sako actually has a mean, mean, so mean nice. Ibuki himself. Oh, right, yes, that's right. And he trains extensively with Sien whenever Sien is uh, in Japan. When oh, he passes really? through. Yeah. Okay. So okay. to get from Singapore to fly to America, you usually pass through Narita, which is a travel point, and then he'll do a stopover a few days and do training. So yeah, okay, okay. Sako probably has, of all the Akumas in the world, the most uh, Ibuki training that I have. Oh, well, nice air throw there from Harumi. He's ready for the demon flip, all ready to go. Just gets there for the air throw to punish that. All right, but here comes the big combos from Sako now. Into the corner, yeah. Against Akuma, I would definitely wait to see if the Akumas are willing Ooh, to throw you. The punish on the B skill. Good defense against Tor's heavy punch right now. And now Sako, just look at this pressure right now. Building up a lot of gray health as well. Unrelenting pressure. And that slide safe in this game. Oh, this time Harumi falls for the Tor's heavy punch bait. Yeah, it, it's, it's interesting because, like I said, Akuma gets so much damage off of combos and hits and setups. That, you know, honestly, I, I, I always say this. I feel like you've got to take a few throws from Akuma before you can really start worrying about teching or worrying about, you know, getting thrown because that towards heavy punch is a trick. And if he crush counters you, oh, my God, another whiff punish from Sako. But wake up buttons from Harumi is going to get the hit Ooh, again. Okay, nice to confirm. Oh, oh that's it safe. That's punishable right there. Yeah, gets the stun. And so Harumi is going Aye. to take round number two. Putting on a little bit of her own murder face here right now. Focused on the job at hand. Oh, what a jump timing from Harumi. This is amazing. She's channeling the spirit of Sien. <laughs> Oh, oh, nice back and forth. Yeah, and look at how Sako does not cancel that standing medium kick from Takatsu. He really is confirming. That was beautiful from Harumi as well. Saw the neutral jump, was able to teleport oh. dash. But again, Sako with the clutch confirms. Now here comes the big damage into the corner. And almost done. And wow, Harumi with a wake up throw. That but wasn't even a needed. delay. That wasn't even a delayed throw. She just did it right away as soon as she got up. Right, getting some space thanks to that. Calm, how does he get out? Just a jump back. Yeah. She's got another one sitting in the wings ready to spin. Great slide. What? Wow. An uppercut from that far away. Sako going with the Hail Mary EX oh, and it worked. Goodness, what a nasty combination. Overhead, oh. went for the throw and she crouched under it oh. successfully. Woo! It's gonna take it. Yeah, she's got no kunai. That's the biggest problem right now. She still has a bomb though for mix and, and then she just walks into the fireballs. And Sako with a little smile on his face, like, yeah, I got away with that EX uppercut, 100%. <laughs> and Ibuki, a very difficult situation when you don't have any kunais. You really do have to manage your ammunition for the. Daggers, because when you end up in the, in the end round, in the end game, without them, it really is painful. Yeah, you basically just have no way to... Oh! oh! Sako using the Akuma parry and then going with the overhead demon flip option. Oh, stayed in the front. Put the mix up, right a combo into the corner, throw, not quite stunned yet. Went for another one, that would have did it. But Sako has to cancel that second pierce into a V-trigger to keep it safe. Oh. Oh, great oh. slide under. That's what she needed the last round. She gets and it here. Just to build some extra meter, crouch light punch in the throw instead of, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's a very dangerous thing to try yeah, against Sokka. You can certainly turn it around. All right, gets the right of combo. 
and now playing very safe and trying to space that V skill a little bit more carefully because we've seen Sokka whip punish it a few times and there you go. There's that frame trap from Akuma. Oh, trading. Wow. He just confirmed the shoryuken on the landing. All right, getting a, also a little bit of gray health with the startup of the red fireball, then gets the stun off of the throw. Takes that round. Interesting that he Sokka. went for the sweep as the combo ender. Sako at match point now. Kurumi trying to go oh, again with the parry on the B skill. I think Sako is definitely red that, she, you know, she's trying to use it at that specific range there because she doesn't want to get whiff punished anymore. But now Sako's just parrying it and botting him that way instead. Botting her that way instead. Alright, into the corner now. Good patience, ah. but trying to jump out. Try to cross up, but Sako backing up at the last second so that he can get the uppercut. Now Harumi trying to slowly walk Sako away from the corner. Sako obliging, but he has a big life lead. So I just don't think he's really worried right now. He's willing to give up a little bit of that space, that screen real estate. Just can't eat these bomb setups. Oh, oh wow. punish the command dash. Oh, okay, doesn't air it. What? Here we go. Oh, what? got him, but Still safely. Got no yeah. combo extension after that. 28 seconds left. Oh, oh he got caught! What? But she missed the Rider. No whiff punish that time from Sako, but Sako does get the frame trap. Crouching medium kick. Sako is full on the CA gauge, too. So he, Chip is a danger right now. Oh, ah. doesn't even need it, doesn't even need it. Just the neutral jump to punish the air kunai. Sako moves on. No. I do believe, are we in? So I, I, I think we are still in pools right now. I mean, we're seeing a lot of the... Uh, uh, a lot that of can't the be a pool match. Look at that. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to think it is, but I, I That's saw... a grand finals match right there. <laughs> But I mean, because the thing is, we're seeing, yeah, because this next match is, no, this, no. no, James, please, this can't be, don't let this happen. I don't believe, I do not believe, I do not believe that this is a pools match coming up. Look, sometimes the bracket gods frown upon you and you get this type of anomaly so early into the <laughs> tournament. It is going to be, if our information is correct, we, do we have fake tournament news here? No, this is real. It's going to be Echo Fox Momochi from Japan, a winner of CPT before. Yes. And Evo. Versus Doi Kwamba's Shaohai in Wave H pools. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, sure enough, there they are. This Shaohai fresh off of a second place finish oh, you know in why? King of Fighters. They only put... Oh, yeah, yesterday was a spectacular uh, yeah. finals with E.T. And, e. and Xiao Hai. And I know he was very sad that he did not take that tournament. He probably had 100 nasty tweets lined up for his <laughs> first place victory. He had to delete all of them. They're on draft mode. <laughs> he had to unschedule them all. He's like, quick, delete them all. Oh, man. Yeah, Xiao Hai definitely getting into that. I mean, well, you talked a little bit earlier about, you know, like the personalities and mm -hmm. stuff and Xiao Hai. Oh. Secretly had this little nasty streak going for him. He's American. <laughs> All he needed was Google Translate to get those those feelings off of his chest. Oh, Do follow uh, Shanghai underscore on Twitter if you want to see some juicy tweets. Mochi still very reticent, at least on the internet. Okay, so this is a round two match. This is not tech even this is then. Second though, stage of pool. If you second told me that this pool. was the finals of you know, CPT at EVO, I would not be shocked. <laughs> this is the type of caliber right. of players we're dealing with. Again, Shaohai, second place just last night in Kyoev. No stranger to the top eight stage on the world's biggest tournament. Right. Here he finds himself very early on with a opponent of this magnitude. And it looks like Momochi is going to go with Ibuki. So mm -hmm. we know that Momochi plays Ibuki and Ken. And he's been using Ken a lot, but I just maybe he just really dislikes the Kami Ken matchup. Are you surprised that in this Kami matchup, Omochi would default to Ibuki instead of Ken? Well, not in particular. I feel like uh, Kami kind of gives Ken a little bit of trouble in the neutral game. And 
to kind of dominate that section. And another thing, too, is that I feel like Ibuki takes advantage of Kami's 900 health a little bit better. Because once she gets in with the bomb mix-ups, Kami's life will melt away. Oh, was that a counter hit pushback, maybe? Uh, from Momochi on Wake Up, that combo did not reach for Xiao Hai, but Stun is built up. Oh, the parry of the Kunai. Perfect distancing on that fully charged B skill. Xiao Hai certainly not one to wilt away after last night's defeat to ET. He's going to take all that salt and bring it to the table here in Street Fighter. He's already built up a commanding life lead. Nice little tick throw after the dash. Yeah, despite the fact that, oh man, maybe this pick is not going to work out for Momochi very well. In previous tournaments, though, he has always gone with his counter -turn. He won't go back. Mm -hmm. He's uh, very confident because he plays thousands and thousands of matches online and in the training room. He's designed his Ibuki to counter situations and cover his blind spots. I don't think he's going to change anything. Oh, okay. There's this round is definitely going much better. For Momochi, wow, e wake up EX uppercut from Xiao Hai. But all that is information for Momochi. What yep. will Xiao Hai do under duress in those 50 50 situations? He's already spawned in one EX uppercut. And what right will there, he do? You saw uh, Momochi on wake up just walk away from Kami. Walking away from Kami is actually pretty effective. It's just w walking away from the situation. Yeah, pretty non much. Non confrontational. The just Gandhi walk back. Yeah, she doesn't. Kami doesn't have great lows. It's just the crouching medium kick, crouching heavy kick. And that's all you really have to worry about. And you know, you can hit confirm crouch one hit of crouching medium kick, but it's very, very, very hard. Oh mm -hmm. man, that's the second time now. All right, into the corner now, and Momochi backs up a little bit. Tries to give her, give uh, Xiao Hai a little bit of space. Give Kami a little space. Here we go, using that EX Kunai to stay pressure, but nice counter hit confirmed from Xiao Hai. Gets in there for the throw. Just like Akuma, I think Kami really has to throw a lot to establish that game to get the opponent pressing buttons, because that's how you're going to open them up for the frame traps and the shimmies. Both of them sitting on full V trigger. That's why they're both kind of scared to go in right now, because one hit can be a lot of damage. Oh. Premature activation there. Oh, no, no whiff punch, just a little too slow. But you know what, Xiao is losing a lot, and I do like the fact that he hasn't gone for a Hail Mary dive kick. Usually after Kami's activate a V-Trigger, you're almost guaranteed right away it's just going to be jump dive kick. And I like that Xiao Hai is just hasn't been baited into spending that. Oh! No fear folks! That was the anti-terrorist countermeasure. That is how you do it on the Delta Red squad, I guess. The counter terrorists have won that battle. <laughs> this is CSGO. Did you see one sight of the bomb and he responded with force? And that was genius because he knew that, that wasn't a, that's not a true block string. So he was able to uppercut right before the bomb exploded. And he knew that Momochi would be going in for the mix-up. And not oh, be ready wow. to right, right over the hooligan. And uh, just as was predicted, Momuchi not faltering away from his decision to go with Ibuki in this matchup. Great Ooh, punish. Yeah. One of those great counter poke with, uh, fishing buttons there. Stays in front. Wow, yeah. brilliant blocking or a lucky guess. No one will know the better. Trying to distract Kami, calling for a cat right now. In the <laughs> neutral game, it's really been this negotiation of the standing medium kick for Kami and on Momochi's side. Oh, again, uppercut into critical art. How I feel good like has we've been with that? I feel like we've seen this before, and now Xiao Hai is at match point versus Momochi. He's been so patient on the ground that he forced Momochi, the king of footsies, to jump at him with a full meter. Uh, Imagine yeah, you, the frustration of Momochi not, just not being able to get any uh, offense starting. Okay, that's nice. That's a good start right there. But you can see Momochi fishing a lot with that crouching medium punch. That is Ibuki's pretty much her best uh, footsie poke button. You know, she can try to go for maybe a towards heavy kick like we just saw earlier. But really, crouching medium punch is going to be her main footsie tool. 
Cammy's reach out distances that button a lot. Ah, there. Waited for the uppercut. Didn't come. As it did in the first match. There it is. Oh, boy. Okay. Okay, so Momochi both times taking round two. See if he can get the third round, however, to extend it to a final game. <laughs> Mochi loves to do those two D skills in a row. No response from Xiao Han. Oh, wow. Good defense from Xiao Hai. Again, you can see Xiao Hai play very patiently. Oh, wow. Tries to get in there with the EX dive kick. Missed and then gets counter hit afterwards. Mochi getting right back in there with that EX kunai. Nah. It's a stun. Okay, he's going to be able to let go of all the daggers here. No, he goes for the reset instead. Ooh. Oh, boy. What a block. And now. Ah, the wake up button. I believe Ibuki's standing light punch is also her counter hit pushback button, and just like Laura. So uh, in case you guys are like people are wondering what I'm talking about, there are certain buttons that you can hit when you wake up that if the opponent counter hits you, the first frame of your normal actually widens your like present like the box that you're standing in a little bit. So it actually pushes the opponent back a little bit and causes certain counter hit combos to whiff. And some players are starting to use that, especially against Ibuki. Yep. Off of the bomb mix-ups. I think we saw Haitani use that against Sien. People are like, wait, is he really doing that? Is he really taking damage in order to, you know, in effect mitigate all that additional combo? What? what? Okay, so... What? <laughs> Look, he had a big old life lead, and so he just basically said, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and disrespect him. After the knee bullet, I am minus two. I know that my opponent wants to hit a button, so let's just go. Xiao Hai now at match point again. All three games so far, Xiao Hai has taken the first round, but all three games, Momochi has taken the second round. So let's see if Momochi can continue that. Wow, right, dashed right under that. Ooh, oh, man. Did with a club swing. Know that Momochi was going to walk forward. Ooh, okay. Crush in there, still gets the juggle. This is where. Ah. <laughs> Momochi has been wrong on that mix up three times in a row now. Shall he I... out of four times, he's gone yeah. for the S uppercut. And then when he needed the block, he did so. Obedient block. Okay, V trigger activated. This time, no EX uppercut after the knee bullet. All right. Bomb cross up. Oh, Still gets the rider. He tell he, he command dashed and stayed on the same side. Stayed on the same side, and it looked like maybe Shao Hai was thinking of trying to do like crouch medium punch into EX drill. That would have been projectile invincible. It would have avoided the bomb, but he probably thought Momochi was going to go to the other side. Oh, wake up buttons from Momochi! Stays in the front, ah. and, but he delayed it. He delayed his crouching mm. light punch that time to see if there would be an uppercut. Right. Momochi almost at a full V trigger. Just needs to, yep, there it is. Blocked a few more hits. But look at all that gray health built up. That is one of Kami's biggest strengths, is how fast she can build up your gray health. Mochi now, you can see just not hitting very many buttons. Just playing very calm on the ground right now, yeah. No V trigger available. Oh, oh he's gonna be able There's to convert off of that. Oh. I'm, I think he went for the media. I'm not sure if it, I was gonna recover in time to block an uppercut. No conversion. There's a cannon strike you spoke of. Finally has to resort to it. Unable to get any. Oh. Patience. Fishing with that stand roundhouse, trying to get a crush counter off of that. Oh. All right, one hit now for Xiao Hai. Oh, he jumped at him. Remember the uppercut in the critical art before? Oh! If that was a counter hit, that would have been it. Oh, oh he's in there! It's not enough to kill, though. But he did. 
Oh, here comes the Wolf Shores. Good block on the overhead and the low light punch and the yeah. death stare into the handshake. Oh, man. It, it, it looked like Momochi, after that overhead, just really wanted to disrespect Xiao Hai and went with a button afterwards. But Xiao Hai, with that three frame crouching light punch, is going to take it. So Xiao Hai continues forward. Uh, our notes here on screen does say it is pools, but it is round two of okay. pools. So this is the next phase of pools, which is why Even we have a grand then, final. Yeah, I know, right? You would expect this match to be at least in top eight or, you know, late in semifinals. But Momochi has been sent to loser's bracket. We have been having uh, some crazy, crazy results here. Certainly this was not five. an upset. This could have gone either oh, way. Yeah, yeah, Both yeah, uh, sure. players champions in their own right. But just that, you know, compared to the other match. Oh, well, actually, we're in getting into the second round. <laughs> I do see on oh this index card some very nice uh, matchups coming up. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely stay tuned for that. We'll be right back for more Capcom Fighters action here at EVO 2017.